Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the Iowa Association of Business and Industries Weekly Business Report. My name is Steffi Lee, and I'm part of the communications team here at ABI. And this week, we have ABI President Mike Ralston and Vice President of Public Policy J.D. Davis to talk about the ABI's D.C. fly-in that took place last month. So, Mike, what was the purpose of this trip and who all joined this trip? Uh, this, I believe, was uh, the 10th year, uh, the fifth biennial trip that we uh, take to uh, Washington. And the purpose of the trip is really a relationship building trip. We want to make sure our members go to Washington and have a first class experience. We meet with the delegation, not their staff. Staff is president, of course, and we value staff, but we meet with the, the uh, uh, representatives in Congress and the U.S. senators themselves to make sure that we're talking about issues that are important to employers. So things having to do with workforce and supply chain and those sorts of things. Those are the kinds of things we talk about on this trip. I guess, uh, lastly, I'd say that um, uh, this trip was led this year by ABI Chair Jack Haskin and his wife, former ABI Chair Sarah Haskin. They're the owners of Jackson Manufacturing in Maquoketa. We had several women and men that made up our delegation, and it was a terrific trip, really a high-value experience, we think, for the members, but mostly for the delegation. They get to hear from real business people about real issues. Great, thank you, Mike. And JD, Mike had just mentioned some of the most pressing issues facing Iowa businesses, but what are some other policy issues that ABI members wanted you to address and that you were able to address on this trip to DC? Yeah, Mike is right. Uh, the conversations, whether or not there are questions from ABI members or lead out comments from the members of Congress themselves, uh, high on the list of everything that is talked about with ABI is of course workforce issues, getting people back to work after being necessarily unemployed because of COVID uh, and how that progress is going and what federal government is doing that either helps or hinders that. Uh, supply chain issues. Uh, this is a federal response to uh, cloggages in our, our ports and uh, underemployment and trucking. And we're trying to figure out the logistics of how the federal government can be involved there. Those were topics uh, we talked about the inflationary pressures on manufacturing and the fact that some manufacturers cannot get a price placed on the products that they are needing for their inputs for their manufacturing. Uh, uh, we also talked uh, uh, in, in relationship with workforce, uh, a business's perspective that it seems senseless that we can't figure out how to get some immigration reform done that will put more deserving people into the workplace that can be that are very eager to work and uh, looking for legal status to do that. Uh, we also uh, talked about those things that are right now on the plate of Congress. And uh, uh, the, for example, we are very strong in our support and have been for weeks on the, the bipartisan infrastructure bill that seems to be held hostage by something that we don't support, uh, uh, which is uh, the, all the taxes that uh, seem to be changing day by day as Congress looks for a way to fund a human infrastructure bill uh, and uh, look for more of that in our, in, our, in our weekly this week because, you know, we are getting literally 24 hours notice of a brand new approach of how to tax business to pay for all these things. Um, so uh, high value conversations with the delegation, uh, they, I, I can report, are very plugged in on all the issues that ABI is pursuing with them. Part of the DC fly-in also allows for ABI to meet with our national partner. So what is helpful and advantageous about being able to meet with our federal partners in DC and talk to them about these issues to help with advocacy. Maybe I'm gonna jump in there real quick if that's all right. Um, we did have great meetings with our partners, Steffi. Um, National Association of Manufacturers, US Chamber of Commerce and BIPAC, the Business and Industry Political Action Committee. And I would say the NAM is always a terrific partner, really strong in advocacy related to, to manufacturing concerns. Uh, JD might talk about the BIPAC meeting. I, I do want to say, though, that we had a, a very frank discussion with our partner friends at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce over some issues that we thought uh, perhaps the chamber um, uh, could do a little better job on. And so that's what's really uh, valuable about this trip. It's not just a, we go out there and listen. It's truly a dialogue, and, and we appreciated that dialogue we have with the chamber. JD, hope that's all right. I jump in there. I, I do think it's important, uh, the way that we structured the meetings, we got a good uh, a briefing from our national partners at the National Association of Manufacturers prior to having our first meetings with the delegation. Uh, we coordinate with them on our federal advocacy uh, throughout the year. 
And as we are going to be having critical meetings in real time in DC, uh, it, the NAM provided us very good uh, up to the moment uh, 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 briefing of what was happening and what was moving in Congress. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, JD, for providing this wrap up of the ABI DC fly in. And if anyone has any questions about policy issues that ABI might be working on or any policy issues that you want ABI to look into, please reach out to JD at jddavis at iowaabi.org. Thank you.